I'm going to get my oil pastels out because I just find it a lot easier to draw the oil pastel. I'm going to draw like these little plant life. You get to decide what plant life you want. If you want, you could take your phone out and research um, ocean fauna, F-A-U-N-A. -A. Um, probably going to be doing some coral, some seaweed. I don't know yet. If you decide to use oil pastels, make sure that your hands are clean and your oil pastels clean. And you might benefit from using a towel of some sort. I'm going to do this one probably in red. I know they have blue here, but quite honestly, if we're going to be using a lot of blue for the water, I think I would like some red in there. I kind of want to do pink, so I'm just doing little streaks of red here. Clean off my finger. And I'm going to switch over to white. And I'm going to blend it to get that pink color. So oil pastels is kind of like painting with sticks. Is that the pink color? So if you're trying to create a blend of colors, kind of like what I'm doing, I found that moving my lighter color on top of my dark color in a circular fashion helps mix the oil pastels together better than going at a side diagonal hatch. So for the seaweed, I'm going to use a nice light green for the area where my shadow is not appearing. And I'm going to use a dark green for my shadowy parts. So I'm going to kind of create like a double layer effect here. Uh, one light green squiggly strip and then right next to it one dark green squiggly strip. This will create a contrast and help my colors pop. It'll also make my seaweed look three dimensional. Remember, make sure that you're using clean oil pastels and clean hands. For the rocks, I used a nice light, uh, well, I used a bittersweet brown to create a series of humps. One small, one medium, one large, because I want my rocks to look natural. I don't want my rocks to all have the same shape and size and, and what have you. So I created that and the bottoms obviously are cut off by the sand. So I did a straight horizontal line underneath my bumps and then I did a nice side diagonal hatch leaving some of the white of my paper to show. That way I could blend in uh, a nice tan brown on top, kind of like I did with my white for my coral to create that pinkish color. I want to create kind of like a, like, a, like a darker tan than what I have in my oil pastel palette. So I'm going to take dark brown on the bottom, do a few strips of it with white in between, and then I'm going to take my lighter tan color and use it as a blender and kind of go in a burnishing circular fashion where my hand is moving in a circle to kind of blend those colors together until I get a nice solid dark tan for my rocks back here. I'm going to put little streaks of white crayon, like actual Crayola crayon, through here so I can kind of get these light beams in here without having to worry about going too gentle with my brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to add the crayon after class since I can't find my watercolor. Um, tote. You know how I have like an opening, like I open it and there's a bunch of su supplies on there. For some reason I... I don't know where I put it. Teacher was naughty and she didn't put her... Oh! <sighs> I changed the location. <laughs> you ever change the location after you're done organizing and then you're like, where did it go? <laughs> oh, I hate it when that happens.
Okay, so you're not going to really see very well what I'm doing, but I am putting little streaks in here. And you'll see it when I put my wash in. I'm going to lighten this up here. Make sure that pencil markings in here. <sighs> Not going to bother with my eyeball. I'm actually going to put ink in my eyeball after I'm done. But I don't want to risk it getting wet. <sighs> yeah. And the rest is like a series of washes. It's really, really simple. Most of your hard work has been done with crayon, oil pastel, or some sort of water-resistant material. Could be Sharpie if you wanted to do fancy things with colored pencil. This entire month is really focusing on using different mediums and techniques to kind of get you to where you need to be. Now, a wash is really simple. It's thinned out water. So let's start with a really light color for our sand and then move towards blue. So, a wash usually has a diluted paint. It's thinned out. So that's why I'm not really getting that much paint on my, on my brush here. Super, super thin. I'm still going to try to avoid painting my seaweed and my coral, but I'm really not going to worry too much about fine-tuned painting around shapes. I'm just going to kind of wiggle my way through these cracks. Yes, I'm going to end up going a little bit past my crack, but since I have oil pastel here, it's going to resist any paint that might kind of spill over into the colorful areas. If you want to add shadows in your sand, just wait for your first layer to dry and then add a thin layer of wash on top and you'll kind of get a darker color. It'll give you a little bit more control over it. Yes? So we're going to repeat the same consistency as we used for the sand, but this time we're going to use blue. We're using blue next and not first because if we were to do it the other way around, the blue would tarnish our yellow and make our sand green because you got a little bit of that leftover paint in the water. So always move from light to dark when doing your watercolor paint. For a wash, you're going to need a wet consistency. The more paint you have, the darker the wash is going to be. So if you want a light blue, do a few drops of paint. If you want it to be a medium blue, maybe spin your brush around for maybe half a birthday song in your dry palette. Totally up to you, though. But you can see some of my light beam coming through. You see that crayon? Crayon seems to do a better job showing up when it comes to a wash than white oil pastel. I've noticed that too. So obviously I'm doing, being really careful around my beluga. But you can kind of see that those beams coming in. Now if I want them to show up a little bit better, then I'll just add more paint and make my water area darker but it's not really necessary for you to do that. Super, super cool. I probably could have 
made my beams a little bit thicker, but quite honestly, I couldn't see what I was doing. Hmm. Let's see. So if you have Crayola Crayon, I would advise going just a little bit thicker than what I did, but I just, I didn't want to risk. I don't know if you can see it. My screen is loading. Ah, see, it's too thin. I don't, I think it's too thin. Um, I do kind of want this area to kind of look. I'm adding some more water here. I do want this area to kind of look a little more bubbly right here where I added my kind of really wet area. And I'm going to sprinkle some salt on there to kind of give it some bubbly look. This is my multi-technique box. go. There's my bubbly look. I'm going to put some bubbly look over here too. I'll make it appear a little bit darker. Boop. Boop, 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 boop. And add some bubbly stuff over here. So you got texture in your artwork. Don't mess with it while it's wet. Your extra, your excess sand will fall off when you tap it. Okay. But right now, you kind of want that sand to kind of soak up some of that paint to create these kind of fizzy, bubbly kind of look, textures to it. Now, if you don't want the bubbles to be randomly spread throughout your piece, I'd wait to do the sand very last. You see how I'm still painting? But I don't really care if there's little bubbles here and there. Uh, I think it looks a, a lot more interesting, but some people are very particular. And if you wanted to use charcoal or be super, super careful with your beluga and use like a different type of, um, what do you call it, medium, like if you wanted to use ink, you can. I personally am probably going to use ink uh, because I am terrified of going way too dark with my beluga. But that's, I guess I could use like a little streak of black and kind of use the drag and pull technique if I really wanted to. Here, let's see. I'm going to get a, a tiny brush. And the thing I hate about this artist loft is, is it flakes.